do a shameless plug for our virtual PLCs. We have had a few of them so far, and our Carnegie uh, our Carnegie team is also supporting these. What we try to do through February and March is have just quick 30 minute sessions so that you could join during the day and it wouldn't be after school. And this is more of like a topic overview of the upcoming topic. So we do have one left for sixth grade, which is March 28th. And we have one left for eighth grade, which is March 20th. Those were our two target grades. We will have the link um, to this also on the resource page, and it's also on Curriculum Central. Okay, our opening activity is a little video, and this is going to be your first opportunity to participate. I'm going to play the video, and as you watch the video, please keep these two questions in mind. What lessons can you learn from the video? And how does this relate to teaching and learning math? What lessons can you gather from the video? They don't have to be related to teaching and learning. They could be other lessons, but then also how does it connect to teaching or learning math? We have in the chat by Ms. Jacoy, we need to help students find their way over uh, the learning gaps to master new material. Well, I think you kind of hit both of the questions at, in one shot, huh? Um, I enjoyed how each one kind of had to work at their own pace to make it over. You know, they not everybody is fast, and not everybody is you know as the is that the, at the end either. <clears throat> and so, what happens if we push them and they're not ready, or we hold them back and they are ready? So, those are just a few of the things that I kind of took away from it. You know, when we encounter some difficulties or changes in our um... Um, career, you know, like in this case, the chickens, you know, just walking by and then they encounter there's water in their pathway. You know, they need to find maybe one of them might be more a risk taker and would like to go and jump, you know, right away while the others are more cautious. And there's always one or two, I, I might consider one of those that are very, very cautious and might say, I don't know, this might be the right way, but I'm not sure. And after several times and tries, then I can get to see the path. Yeah. Thanks, Edgardo. There's a perseverance too that, you know, that has to be has to be there. Okay. Let's move on. So in kind of in the same spirit as the chickens. Uh, here's a quote from Blended Learning, UDL and Blended Learning. If we want to create equal opportunities for all learners to succeed, we have to ditch our one-size-fits-all practices and provide flexible pathways for students to learn. And that, you know, is easy to say it in a quote, much harder to implement, but there is, you know, there is some truth there, right? The the equal opportunities is not giving everybody the same thing. That's equal, but it's is it equitable? And so the flexible pathways, what does that really mean or look like? So we're going to dive into that just a little bit. Our learning objective for today is to learning how to engage students in stations 
in order to impact student learning. That's the, that's the overarching objective, but how we're gonna do that, the success criteria, is being able to describe ways to engage students using Mathia, the Carnegie resources, and some lead forward strategies. And we're gonna model one in particular called the mystery bag. Our target for today, <clears throat> because most of the time we're hitting that 90% because we're focusing on tier one instruction, but we also now need to find a way to move students into that meets. We may have a lot of students at approaches, but then how do we meet that 60% goal? Because that's aggressive. Our de instructional delivery and design of the curriculum is kind of our, our brick, our piece of the pyramid in order to um, access student achievement. Now here's the resource page. Edgardo's gonna drop the link in the chat and we'll be referencing this. So please keep this open into one of your tabs. If you miss the sign-in sheet, the link is the here. And then we've highlighted uh, down at the bottom and then we've highlighted uh, a few of the links that we are going to be using for today. So then why, why do we have all those other links on there? Because a lot of um, instructional leaders, if you're an ILT or if you're a demo teacher, a uh, coach, or if you're just supporting one of your teammates and it's in a different grade, this is kind of a one-stop shop for the quarterly calendars, the overview, module overviews, the anchor charts, and then even the weekly IPCs all in one place. Okay, so as we get into quarter four, let's take a look at the modules and the data. And the data that we're gonna be using is the 2023 STAR. We know everybody's taking the STAR simulation, uh, but we don't really have all the data yet from that. When we looked at it, uh, there just wasn't a large enough sample size for us to pull that data yet. That would have been even better. It's just a little quick turnaround because a lot of campuses are taking it this week. Okay, so for sixth and sixth grade honors, it's module five for sixth grade and module six for six honors, but it's the same lessons, the same material. You'll notice it's top, two topics. And then we've got some images there. And those images represent the teaks. So instead of putting the actual teak, we wanted you to see some of the representations that are indicative of the teak. So just a little different twist on it. In module, uh, I'm sorry, in grade seven, it's also module five. Well, it's module five for all of them. But again, it's two topics areas and surface area and three-dimensional figures. And then in eighth grade, this module has four topics. So it's a more, more meaty, more, a little bit longer of a module. So what we're gonna ask you to do now is do some stamping. For whichever grade level you're, you're teaching, we'd like for you to stamp using Zoom annotations. <clears throat> you're going to stamp with a check mark or with a star on those topics you think students are going to do well or or typically do well if you've taught this in the past and maybe put an x a stamp with an x on it on the ones that you think maybe students don't do very well on okay just based on the images rather than the teaks so you have two two different ways to stamp. The ones you think they'll do well on, the ones you think they struggle more with, okay? And you don't, just go ahead and stamp the one that's on your grade level for sixth and six honors, seventh or eighth. I see some X's and some checks. Do we have some sixth and seventh grade teachers? Okay, Mr. Johnson, it looks like you're the lone seventh grade teacher. <laughs> Uh, you'll see the data points that are now showing for each grade level, and we can see what 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 teaks are higher. 
the statistical process with uh, frequency tables for sixth grade, for seventh grade, kind of, they're all low, right? For seventh grade, that's, that's definitely a, the struggle grade. And then for eighth grade, we've got the real numbers, the rational and irrational. And then even here, this image, this is an interesting image right here. That's actually Pythagorean theorem. And then the curved figures, they struggle with the curved figures. So this is where six honors and seventh honors would be. Now for six honors, module five is a seventh grade module. And so that's why this module five is coming after the, the data, the module six. We had to flip those so that way they're getting those sixth grade teaks before star. This is the topic that's going to be coming after star or the module that's going to be coming after star, which is thinking proportionally. Because in order to be signed up for six honors, that means they're also learning some of those seventh grade teaks. These are going to be the five topics. It's it's a it's a meaty module. Um, and in order to kind of push it after star, it's, it's going to be really fast paced. But these are the topics that are involved. And then with seventh honors, we know that they also have some seventh grade teaks they have to teach, even though they're taking the eighth grade star. So again, these are coming after star. And here are some of the images that go with them. We're not necessarily gonna ask you to annotate on this slide because these are teaks for the test, not, they are not the teaks for, that they'll need for the test. They're the, they'll need them to satisfy their course requirement. Somehow I was also annotating. And there's the data for these. As you can see, that six honors topic, we have, there's a lot of low teaks. And these are from the seventh graders that took these concepts. We know six honors won't be tested on it, but we can still use the data to look ahead and see where we think they're gonna struggle. And then for seventh honors, you know, you've got some on the little higher side. Higher is really not that much higher. We're talking about 53, but it's a lot of probability. In quarter four, if we're spiraling and we're spiraling off in all directions, what exactly are we spiraling? Are we spiraling instruction or are we spiraling a review? If we're spiraling instruction, Carnegie does that through its pacing because some teaks are partially covered and then they come back again in a later module. For us in module in quarter four, we're probably not doing a lot of that part uh, or a lot of this. We're doing more of the spiral review, the that, right? This or that because we're gonna be getting into, well, we've taught them the concepts. Now, what is it we need to review? What do we need to keep them sharp on? So in the chat, if you'll take about 20 seconds and don't hit the, don't hit the return button yet, but type in your answer. What is it during quarter four that you'll be spiraling? Will you be spiraling first instruction or will you be spiraling review? And then in five seconds, Everybody will hit return at the same time. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So got a, a, one, a, couple, a little bit of first instruction. Well, I guess if you're an honors teacher, sixth or seventh honors, you will have some new instruction in, in quarter four. But from now up until mid-April, mid you may be spiraling the review. Okay, well, one of the ways that you can spiral a review or even first instruction, we've had some that have been very successful at even using stations during first instruction is through station rotations. If you're experienced at station rotations, hopefully this next piece will still give you some, um, some reminders. And if you've not tried stations, here's a good place to start on the, resource page, there is a one-pager, a station rotation guide. 
And this station rotation guide that's up here in the corner has these images on it. And so it gives you some things to consider as you start stations, how to model and rehearse, creating some signs, and then even having a poster on your expectations about getting along, kind of having some norms. And then iReady has even a, a template that you can use to identify what stations do you want and how do you want to group your stations. You can use Mathia data to help you group stations, or you can use your iReady or map data to identify your stations and how you wanna group your students. But that's another, um, another tool you can use, it's available. Just in case, um, if you happen to uh, need the presentation, we will share it after the fact. After we finish, we will link it into the resource page as well, right on the top. Uh, that way you can get access to all of these pieces as well. Okay, thank you, Agardo. And so when we talk about stations, we're gonna suggest having starting with three stations. And if you've got a lot of students, you can have you can just double your amount of, but keeping these three stations might be a good starting place. One station would be teacher led, where you would use a you could use a Carnegie resource, either the assignment pages, because if you're using your lessons, you're probably not having enough time to really get into the assignment pages. And you can also use a skills practice. You may have groups of students that need different skills. And so that's how you wanna I, you know, organize your stations and group your students. Another station we're, that we would recommend would be a student-led station. Now, we didn't put it on here. iReady does have some student-led resources, but we're gonna focus on the lead forward strategies that would be, could be put into a student-led resource. So teacher led, this is what that assignment page looks like. It's There's one assignment page for every lesson. Mathia would be another station that we'd recommend. It doesn't have to be teacher monitored too much, but kids need their time on it as well. So while you're working with one, students are working with another, and then in this third station, they would have their technology, okay? So in this next part, I'm gonna turn it over to Edgardo, and he's gonna walk you through the mystery bag. Okay, so we are in the mindset of spiral review so how can we utilize the strategies that are out there and in particular talking about the leaf forward strategies they've been you know giving us in the past uh professional development and we were wondering how could we use our current curriculum along with the lead forward strategies. So here's a point where lead forward will allow you to use these strategies the best way that you see fit. And in this case, we're gonna use this one strategy mystery bag that you may remember from the past. Uh, I think it was last year then when we had um, from lead forward a representative that gave us uh, a training in, on these uh, different strategies. We're gonna concentrate on using our curriculum for quarter four, for sixth grade. And remember that we had two topics in six and six honors. These two topics were the statistical process and the numerical summaries of data. These are the two topics that we are going to be addressing on this uh, particular strategy. Now, I'm going to leave you with uh, just a moment for you to read what the static, statistical process is all about and what is the difference between uh, the numerical summaries of data. Where is that line that divides one and the other? Because as you will see now, we have some standards that are going to be shared. You know, we're going to see 612D on both and 613A on both. So that means there are going to be some traits that are going to be shared between these two topics. And it's going to be our part of the activity that we identify where that line is that divides one with the other. So 
Let's talk more about one in particular, 612D. Data shows a 2023, we did a 44. That's what we got from 2023 star, okay? So what is 12D in regards statistical process? Well, 12D says that we're going to be summarizing categorical data in terms of uh, graphical summaries, talking about specifically histograms, uh, relative frequency, uh, percent bar graphs, um, and mode. Uh, compared with numerical summaries of data, we're going to be talking about numerical summaries, dot plot, box and whisk whiskers plots, percent and bar graphs, median, uh, mean, and the shape of the spread. So we're going to be addressing these two uh, topics um, in this particular activity. In your resource page, you have, um, it's on the second box on the top. It says mystery bag and is the name mystery bag participants. And I hope that you can click on that uh, on that link so you can follow along because we are going to be now working on this one extra strategy uh, all together, but Jackie is going to divide us into um, five different groups. We're gonna make groups of threes. And in the meantime, that Jackie uh, creates and works on the breakout rooms, let's talk about what this mystery bag is all about. Hey, Gardo. Yes. I think because you started the breakout rooms, I'm not able to do that now. Okay, I'll do it in a minute then. Thank you, Jackie. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the mystery bag is we need to organize students into groups. I know you can say three, four of them. This case, we're going to do five groups of threes. We're going to uh, present each group with a bag of questions uh, or assessment items. Uh, it could be visuals. It could be words. It could be vocabulary words. Um, and uh, the purpose for this is that each student draws an item out of that bag and explains its importance to the group. So if you happen to see a graph uh, that is a histogram, let's talk about this histogram. This histogram belongs to an item that pertains to topic number one, because topic number one was uh, making reference of histograms. We're talking about that specific type of questions. And then we're gonna move that item and we're gonna move that item to the slide that has 612D and it says um, statistical process because that particular item, let's say this one right here that you can see belongs to this particular slide, number 10, because it's all about statistical process. I may not get the whole context of the problem. Sometimes we see just the image of the graph or the histogram, but we know that that histogram belongs in some sort of a statistical process. So the problem needs to be dragged down to that slide, okay? so. The purpose is that each one of the members in the group reads one of the problems or the items in that one slide that you have, and then move that, move that item down to the slide that you think it belongs to. Once your bag is fully empty, you, each and every one of your team members will take one item at a time and drag it down to the slide that you think it belongs. Once we finish moving all those items out of your bag into the slide that you think they belong to, then we'll come back together and we will review uh, and see why those items were placed in that one particular slide. For instance, let me do the first one. You can see my slide, I'm on mystery bag one. I'm gonna take, let's say this one right here is about a histogram that displays numbers and I can make it bigger. Uh, this histogram displays um, the number of years of service for a, a sample of US Navy veterans. So this is a histogram 
uh, how many veteran, veterans in the sample had more than 15 years of service? I don't need to solve it. You don't need to solve it right now. All you have to do is take this item, cut it, and then go ahead and place it where it belongs. That is part of the statistical process because we're dealing with a histogram. So I will paste it right here. I will try to make it smaller so you can have room for the other items. So that way I already removed one item from my first slide. My back has only four items left. These are the same slides that you worked on, same items. But once you move these items to the right slides, to the right teaks, then you should have maybe these three items together in the same bag, along with uh, maybe these other ones on, on the bag for 612B, because they're talking about graphical representations of numerical data to describe the center spread and the shape of the data distribution. So they're talking about that. So these items belong in 612D and so forth. 6, 613A is talk about the, the histograms. It talks about the dot plots. It talks about the, um, the stem and leaf plots. You can put them, them together. This is the key to know where they could have been placed uh, once we finish all of the slides, all of the mystery bags. Of course, we gave you a lot of items because in the roster people in actually end up registering for this session like 25 people so we needed to be prepared with these many items and slides for people to work on but let me show you uh on the resource page Jackie can you please put the resource page on the on the chat again I, I just did yes thank you um and the resource page has the actual way that Lead Forward recommends us to use this one particular uh, activity. And so if I might interject, because like Eduardo said, we're doing this virtually, but the intent is to have little Ziploc bags or brown paper bags, sandwich bag type things, and actually cut these images out and have a variety and you're, do, you're just giving each group of students a small sample and then whole group, it, you would share them out and compile it so they would get to see how everybody else placed their items because they're gonna have different items in their bags. And so yep. as Zegardo is showing, this is one, can you go back to the one with the counters? This is a sixth grade example, uh, slide four, please, yes. So here's an example that if you see those dots, the three black dots and the five white dots, as students, they would have to discuss what category, what cluster would those belong in? And the conversations that come out of that is what you want because what you're doing is you're connecting all of the concepts for the whole year. It could be integer, it could be integer operations with the counters, right? It could be proportions, three to five ratios. It could be part to whole or part to part. We could say three to five or we could say three to eight. And so those conversations can come out in this type of activity. So it's sort of like a culminating year activity of how do we connect all the different things that they learn? Because as you see here, you've got benchmark percent, so you can have vocabulary also. You can have images that if they did a data collection and did a survey in class, that's gonna kind of remind them of what they did in class, just having an image of that. So it's not just having test questions, but it's connecting it to vocabulary, to the lesson that you did, to different representations. And then as a whole group, we can say, okay, so what was everything, what did we put under you know, geometry and measurement? Or what did we put under rational numbers and the different categories? And so that first page is what shows all the different categories for sixth grade. And then 
As a Gardo, I'm not sure if we have time to show because I know it's 515. The bell is striking right now. There is a sample for sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, just like this, where it's combining your whole year where they can do this type of work. And maybe when they go into that station, because we talked about station rotations, they look at one bag when they go to that station. And as the next group comes through, they look at a different bag. The eighth so grade is not yet finished. We're still working on it, but it'll be tomorrow. Uh, it'll be ready and placed right here on this same um, uh, resource page. So here's where we are going to link the, the slide deck. And I'm going to do that right now. And in the meantime, if you will please access the survey that's at the bottom of the resource page. And we do put a lot of time and effort and thought into making these moments meaningful for you. So we hope that you're walking away with something valuable. We hope, we obviously don't wanna waste your time. We wanna make sure that if you're coming to our sessions that you're leaving with something that you can implement and that has given you some food for thought. Please reach out to us if you have any additional questions.